So we're going to be doing our first object-oriented programming with JavaScript example. You will going to, especially those of you who have done object-oriented programming before, you will notice that it, do, it is done quite differently. We will going to, first of all, this is how you create class, guys. You will going to create a function. Right. <laughs> I told you, let me lay it. We're going to create a function. I can name my function anything. I'm calling it just so that it's a little bit more readable. I'm going to call this one personal data mm -hmm. class. So this function will actually be my constructor as well as my class name. So if I want to initialize the objects, this is where I will going to pass them. So I'll say I want an object property for name, I need a value for address, I need a value for work, and I need a value for home. So those are my four parameters. Name, address, work, home. Those are the parameters that I'm passing inside my constructor. Now inside the body of the constructor I'll say this dot name equals to name. So uh, the item with this is the property. The item without this is the parameter. So it just uses some ideas of Java, but then it builds itself uh, differently on its own grounds. I don't see it, persist. it it is persisting from last ten plus years. Again, it's a scripting language. It's not a programming language. So <clears throat> this is how you can have the parameters assigned to class properties. So what is the name of the class? Uh, personal data class. Okay. So inside or outside my function, if I want to create an object, I can say I want to create a personal object equals to new personal data class and I can literally pass four values. Okay, so that's that's the gist of it. Let me create those four values that I want to pass. Don't call the second one, it will gonna dial Canada. <laughs> Good morning. Hey. No, I'm not telling you. There's somebody in the middle. You don't get where he lives off the platform. He's a good time. He's having object oriented programming dreams. <laughs> now we're gonna be passing these four values as parameters. Okay, so the value of n will actually go in name, the value of a will go in address, the value of w will go in work, the value of h will go in home, and then after these parameters receive these four values, they will assign it to the class properties. Okay. So, what you can do is, you can actually have a property of the class tied to a method. Okay, so um, let me call it, instead of calling PC, I'm going to call it uh, disp. Now notice, disp is not a parameter. There's no parameter called disp. Rather, I will going to create a function called disp. How would you do that? Well, So, when you assign a class property to something which is not a parameter or a variable, it better be a function. So what this.disp does, it holds a reference of this function disp. What is the benefit of that? Now disp, disp can see all these class properties now. Because disp is part of the class. So inside the body of disp, 
I can literally refer to all these class properties and their values will going to show. So let me build. So you can just reference a function without needing any other special like, and then it just works. It just works. Yeah, Whoever made this, oh, must be a genius. I know. Thank you. So we create a disk function in which we have four line variables, line one, two, three, four. Each of the line variables is tapping into one of the properties of the class, displaying it alongside some HTML elements, and then we are displaying those lines in a single document. Object. Personal object because nobody's calling disp yet dot this and here this place <laughs> so after you create the function which is tied to the class the function is tied to the class so that it can pop in the property it can look into the properties of the class and right outside you create an object by calling the constructor of the class and then you can use that object to call any methods that the object is tied to. 